Okay, so I want to um, tell you about calculating the magnetic field due to a moving point charge. Okay, so here's a moving point charge. It's moving to the right. It's got a speed V. And what we want to find is we want to find the, the magnetic field right here. And we already know its direction from the last video. The way that we find the direction is you take your right hand, you put your thumb in the direction of the moving charge, and then you're going to curl your fingers and your fingers will tell you the way that the magnetic field circulates. And so, um, say right here, right in the plane of the page, the field is straight down. Yeah, it's straight down. Whereas over here, it's straight up. And, and so there are all these concentric circles going around. And so right within the plane of the page, this magnetic field is up. So it's, it's nice. I put a dot there, and you can think of that dot as being the vector that's out of the page. I didn't put an X, which would indicate that it's into the page. Okay, so um, what you do to find this field then is you draw a vector from um, where the charge is, center of the charge, that's supposed to be a point charge, um, to the point where you want to know the field. And let's call that the R vector. And um, this is actually the V vector right here, the velocity vector. And, um, you know, what the strength of that field should depend on a few things. It should depend on, on the Q, how, just how much Q you have. It should depend on how fast you're going. So it's going to depend on V. It's also going to depend on R, how far away you are from it. And as we said in the last video, it should depend also on the angle that R makes with V. So the way that those all factor in is um, this way. The B, due to this, is just going to be we're talking about the magnitude now and the direction. Um, and you'll see how I get the direct, another way of getting the direction using the right hand rule. So it's going to be some constant mu naught over 4 pi. I'll tell you about those constants in a second. Mu naught is called the permeability of free space. And 4 pi is just a constant. So it's going to be mu naught over 4 pi, then times q, whatever this q is. Maybe I'll call it a lowercase q over here. So q times uh, v. Now I'm going to say cross r. And then I'm, I'm going to divide this all by r cubed. Just the magnitude, the length of this times r cubed. Now you might think, can't these cancel out? And they do. In fact, in fact, some books write this as Q, V, sine of theta, and then they cancel out the R's, and this is just R squared. I might teach it that way a little later on. But for right now, um, the reason why we have this, this cross R here is to give you um, the cross product. When you do a cross product of V cross R, when you have the tail of V and the tail of R together, then to figure out the cross product, that's going to give you, that's how you get B. You just take your, your right hand and you're going to sweep from the first vector to the second vector. So V to R, you're going to just sweep across. And the direction your thumb is pointing, that's the direction of the magnetic field. So if you take your V cross R and you sweep it across, the direction your thumb is pointing is the direction of the magnetic field. That's why the magnetic field is up. So we have two ways to figure out the field's direction. We can do V cross R, or we can do on um, this right-hand rule that tells us that, yeah, for, at the plane of the page, it's coming up. Now, if you're wondering about, like, say, right here, it's going that way. And right, right in here on this side, it's going to be going into the page. Let's see if the cross product would give us going into the page. Um, I would take my V cross R. My R is shooting this way this time. So I'd have to, s s you start at um, the first vector and you go the shortest distance to sweep to R. So the shortest distance would be sweeping this way. And you see how my, you probably can't see, but my thumb, when I do that, see my thumb, it's pointing in. And so right there, it's pointing into the page. Okay, so two ways to figure out the cross product. Um, direction. Okay, so um, another way of writing this then is um, sometimes people will do this. They'll say it's equal to mu naught over 4 pi. 
And you know how um, the, the cross product gives you the sine. So you can do Q times, now I'm only talking about the magnitude now. The magnitude of B will be mu naught over 4 pi times Q times V R sine of theta. But I'm going to cancel out that R, that Q V R sine of theta. I'm going to cancel out with one of these. So it's sometimes you see it written like this too. Um, this isn't as, as good because it doesn't give you the direction. Then you need to use your right hand rule to get the direction. But this is um, the, the magnetic field that's due to this. Hey, notice that, um, how do we get the biggest field then? To get the biggest field, we want to make Q really big. We'd like to make V as big as we can. And the angle, it'd be nice if the angle were 90 degrees, because the biggest sign gets is, is 1. And it does that when it's, when it's you know, at pi. And so, so um, like right here, you get, we'd like to be close it have this go real fast and like right here right there that's where the field is the strongest actually right here too and actually i'm you know i'm not drawing this in three dimensions but um, a little bit above the, the charge and a little bit below the charge we have these really strong magnetic fields okay so as a matter of fact along the line if i wanted to know the field along this line say right here then I draw my, my vector r, and you see how uh, the angle between v and r is zero? So when you do, how much of v is perpendicular to r? Remember the cross product gives you the part of v that's perpendicular to r times r. And so how much of v is perpendicular to r? And the answer is none of it. So that turns into zero. So no field all the way along this line right here. But there is field here. It's just not as strong as the field right here. Okay, so when you do this, if Q is in, if Q is in coulombs, Q is charge, and, and we'd like that to be in coulombs. Uh, how do I want to designate this? I'll just say it's in coulombs. And if V is in meters per second, and if R, the distance, is in meters, then what you get is B will be in Teslas. One other thing then about mu naught. Uh, mu naught is called the permeabil permeability of free space. Free space is another word for a vacuum. So it's the permeability of free space. Um, if you're in a different substance, you would use a, a different mu naught then. And um, it turns out that um, the value of mu naught is it's 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7th. Now, we can work out the units in a bit, but that, that's the magnitude. And when you, when you divide that by 4 pi, you can think of this whole thing just being, you see how that turns into... 1 times 10 to the negative 7th. That's what that turns into. Okay, and uh, maybe in another video we'll talk about how, what these units actually are. Okay, so um, I'll be back in another video. See ya.